we washed our wine bottles, totally clean. And, and uh, uh, these rollers here help you roll the bottle. The way I do it is that the blade is closest to me and I roll the bottle away from myself uh, with my thumbs going down. All right, it's a pretty simple procedure. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on there, but what you do need to do is make sure that you kind of stay consistent during the whole process. What we have here is you're going to see it's going to cut in half and then two halves make one glass brick. All right, I'll show you what this looks like. It's really simple. And that's it. You can hear it splinter. All right, I'll do a few of these. It's quite a simple process. The dog is pretty interested too, aren't you, Pops? He likes to be involved. <laughs> you can see it working here. I roll it with a little pressure. There is something important here that the, the glass is such a, a tensile, strong, uh, and very, very fragile material. When you cut it, you should only cut one line onto the bottle, because if you cut more intensely and keep going over the same cut repeatedly, like this, you start to kind of dig into the bottle, and what you're really doing is you're creating a cracks in here that will make the bottle break unevenly. So it's much better to have this fine line, which is only one line, rather than having these repeated lines going over the top of each other, because you're going to make cracks and you may even break the glass because it's less strong in this point here. There are a couple of things that you're going to need here. You need heat to expand the glass, and then you need coal to shrink the glass and these two reactions are going to cause this score line to split the bottle in half. It's a pretty gentle process and it takes a little bit of a, a feeling to get it right. So let's have a go. It takes a few minutes to get the swing of things. I can't do this outside because outside I can't see the flame. You heat the score line, and then you cool the score line, and that's all there is to it. If it doesn't break, you just heat it again, and then you cool it again. If you overheat the glass, it shatters into that spider web shape. If you just heat it enough, it will only cause enough stress to the bottle to make a perfect Can you hold it to the camera? Like it's a pretty good edge. If you want to get a soft edge on there, use very fine sandpaper. Put the sandpaper down on the bench and rub the bottom of this back and forth. You can use it as a very nice cup. This glass is very fragile. It's kind of like a window pane and it could probably break pretty easily I'm not sure how confident I am about doing this, but I'm going to give it a try. These pickle jars are pretty weird, but they make very good glass bricks. I can see the crack growing in it. Yeah, these pickle jars are pretty weird, but they do work. Huh. Whoa. 
Oh. That's pretty nice. Wow. See the lid? So that's a pickle jar. But if you smoothed off the top of that with sandpaper, that'd be a very nice candle jar. Wow. With a nice edge on it. Painted. Boring old pickle jar. Interesting candle holder. Or very interesting glass to drink from. As long as you sand the edge on the top, it can't hurt you or anything. It's like a normal glass. It's very good use. That was a perfect cut though. Didn't even need the ice. Finally we get to cut some of these wine bottles that we found today. That's the first one. Takes a little bit of practice. Uh, it's got a little crack in it. I can still use it. These tops are cool though, because we can just put a tea light under it and stick the top on, leave the lid off, and that will uh, be windproof outside. So that's a pretty nice byproduct. Now we're going to do the weird ones. These ones are a little thicker. You can see that these wine bottles are a little more easy to see through. The glass is thinner on this one, and the glass is thicker on this one. Even the bottle is darker, so it may require a tiny bit more heat, but we basically just do everything the same way. Usually the thicker the bottle, the less difficult it is to get a good cut. Okay, that turned out all right. Much thicker. Uh, shame about this one. You can still put it on top of a tea light, but we have a couple more to practice on. That's perfect. That is really good. You couldn't get a straighter line. <laughs> Cracking a bit. Not bad. I think doing the ice slowly makes a big difference. The slower the better.
So what happens now is the last stage, as you can see over here, all these wine bottles have been cut in half, some more successfully, some less successfully, but they're all more or less half bottles. Here we have some beer bottles. I just want to demonstrate how we put all this stuff together. First I'll give you a look at some well cut bottles. They have some pretty nice straight cuts. I take this fabric tape, this gaffer's tape, I put it down here so it sits half on one bottle, half on the other. It's They will touch but it's not really important that it has to be airtight or anything because later the concrete will make it airtight. You just roll this around and, oh, damn it, okay, a little bit of glass. You just roll this around, <laughs> better wear gloves. And uh, you can see here that you make a pretty decent glass brick. The two halves butt up against each other. And this now is a very, very strong brick that's going to be able to sit inside a wall. Can you see the light? Mm -hmm. And sunlight will still be able to come through. So that's the finished product. This is what a glass brick looks like. I'll show you me putting a few more glass bricks together. And eventually this will be enough for us to fill up a whole window. All right, you can even use not so well cut ones. Like this one is not the best looking piece. Camera's like water in it, okay. Just put them together, even if it's not a perfect cut. Even if there's a little gap between them, that's not a big deal. They just need to sit basically against each other. Wrap the fabric over the two so you don't get the glass splinters in it again. Now there's no glass splinters on the outside. And you see even if there's a little gap between the two bottles, it will not affect the way that the glass brick works. Because it'll all be held down by concrete in the end. We'll give them a last polish before we stick them up into the window. As you can see, they can be cleaned a little better. The finished product will be very nice, and we'll show you that project coming up this week. All right, I'll do some wine bottles. Uh, I'll show you the wine bottles. So even the imperfect edges are okay. Just stick them against each other. Yep. Take a decent length of gaffer's tape. Gently wrap it over. Roll it away. So there's no glass shards anywhere. Wine bottle glass brick. Didn't quite make it all the way around on this one. It doesn't really matter, but I do need to seal this because I don't want any concrete seeping into the glass brick. If any concrete goes in, it will destroy the light effect by creating shadow inside. Another wine bottle. It doesn't matter if the glass bricks aren't exactly the same size, as long as they're basically the same size, 
it'll work. As you can see, I've even done it with some other strange bottles, even square bottles on one side, round bottle on the other side. Pretty unusual. That's just crazy. It is crazy. But it still lets light through, and it's still an effective glass brick. You get the swing of it. These are the pickle jars. They came out very well. Again, we just stick them against each other. Two pickle jars. Some gaffer's tape. Feel this flow, 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 flow. That's a very nice glass brick. And if I can show you, you get a lot of light out of this one. Yep. That's the pickle jar glass brick. Take the two pickle jars. It doesn't matter if you have imperfections or if it's not a perfect line. Whoa. It doesn't matter if the tape looks terrible because you're not gonna see the tape, it's gonna be undercover. But what is important is that you seal the glass brick and you don't have any gaps where water or moisture can go in.